Hey, today I'll be talking about episodes 23 through 24 of Rui's Royal Love. First Prince is still living with Chun and trying to fly under the radar, so she doesn't see him as a threat to her biological son, Third Prince. As the Emperor visits Chun's palace more frequently, he takes notice of Yan Wan, who, if you remember, was put in charge of taking care of the First Prince and is all but engaged to Yun Che, the Cold Palace Guard. Yan Wan notices the Emperor noticing her. The next time she sees Yun Che, she tells him that she will be grabbing the opportunity she sees in front of her to raise her station. Not because she doesn't love him, but because she needs money for her family. <laughs> or so she says, anyway. Hailan noticed Yan Wan noticing the Emperor noticing her and tips Chun off as to what's going on, warning her not to make the same mistake Rui did and underestimate the damage a maid can do. <laughs> To be fair to Chun, she isn't at all jealous or worried about Yan Wan being a future consort, it's Hai Lan who convinces her that this will be a huge blow to her and her sons, and she just kind of falls for it. Chun calls Yan Wan in. Using the excuse that an astronomer told her Yan Wan is bad luck for the first prince, she tells Yan Wan that she has decided to send her to work in the gardens. Yan Wan has no choice but to accept. They don't even give her a night to pack and she's sent to work right away. Life in the gardens is tough and Yan Wan, unaccustomed to that kind of physical labor, has a really hard time. Also having a hard time is Yun Che. When Rui gives him her embroidery to sell that night, she finds him steaming drunk, heartbroken over the recent breakup. They chat a bit about their love woes and I mean, objectively, a breakup with a gold digger is better than your husband sending you to the cold palace to live out the rest of your days, but yeah, they're both upset. With Highland's help, Dr. Zhang gets transferred to the Cold Palace, and if that isn't the happiest I have ever seen Suo Shen. How cute are these two? He will now be able to come by and take care of them whenever they need him. After giving the Empress some time to recover from the loss of her son, Kui brings up the paper cutouts she found near the Cold Palace. It doesn't take much to convince the Empress that Rui must have been responsible, and she's immediately thinking about getting revenge. Like, seriously, the explanation here is that Rui cursed the second prince with her witchy powers and caused a reed to blow in through the window. But again, the Empress is always ready to believe whatever she wants. Of course, this wasn't my fault for being a terrible mother, it was witchcraft. They decide they need to retaliate. Someone drops poisonous snakes into Rui's room. Like, an absurd number of them. Where are you even keeping this many snakes? Yun Che rushes in and manages to drive them away. All that drinking actually came in handy since apparently the alcohol is a snake deterrent. Rui was bitten though, and Yun Cha is forced to suck the venom out of a bite on her hand. Am I sensing a little romantic tension here? This is weirdly sensual. I'm sure it must be weird to be touched by any man by the emperor, even if it is to save your life. Even the doctors don't actually touch their skin. <laughs> They don't leave us in the dark for long, and the culprits are revealed as Hui and A Ruo, who, by the way, has already been promoted to noble lady. She is just soaring through the ranks. Dr. Zhang comes to pay the girls a visit and finds that even their food is being messed with. They're purposely being given food that looks fine, but will aggravate their illness over time. This trio just will not give up. They even go after Yun Che, sending some goons to beat him up after finding out that he was responsible for saving Rui from the snakes. Surprise, surprise, Yun Che was actually ordered by the Emperor's maid Yu Hu to protect Rui at all costs, hence why he's always so eager to help her. The Emperor is still looking out for her from the shadows, which I guess is better than nothing. The blows just keep coming though. As he's working on a dam, Rui's father falls into the water and is swept away. Eventually, they do find his body, but it's too late. The Emperor tells Hailan, who of course thinks Rui must be told and allowed to attend the funeral. <laughs> But the emperor won't hear it. In fact, he doesn't even want her to know about it, warning Hailan not to let the news spill. But when the empress finds out, still bent on revenge, she secretly sends a eunuch to send the news to the cold palace. These dumb bad guys are only making things worse for themselves. Yes, this is a huge blow, and I suppose the empress was hoping Rui would be so sad that she just, what, curl up and die? But no. Every attack is only making it clearer to Rui that she can't just wait around, that they'll never stop trying to hurt her and her loved ones. The crazy thing is, if they had just let her be, it seems like she would have just resigned herself to living out the rest of her life planting flowers in the cold palace. They're creating the threat they're so afraid of. 
Since the first and second attempts didn't work, the Empress tries again and secretly has some paper money sent into the Cold Palace. As we saw in a previous episode, it's burned as an offering for the dead, but it isn't allowed in the palace. The Empress Dowager is especially against this kind of thing. Since her father just died though, the Empress hopes that Rui will burn it anyway, seven days after her father's death, as is the tradition. She has it delivered along with Hailan's regular package to make Rui think it came from Hailan. Then, not leaving anything to chance, she also bribes the Empress Dowager's eunuch to make sure that when the day comes, the Empress Dowager will find out. So, I don't hate Yan Wan. Life is tough. She's seen firsthand that working hard will not get her what she wants in life, and she's pushing love aside to chase after that. It's not noble, but I get it. Not everyone is lucky enough to have a pure love unaffected by other factors like Suo Xin and Dr. Zhang. I am Rui watching these two cutie pies thinking shut up and just get married already. They're so cute! <laughs> Speaking of shut up and get married though, I have to admit that when I first started watching this drama, I was so sure that there was going to be a romance storyline here, something similar to the one in Legend of Zhen Huan. I just think these two are so sweet together. <laughs> If you know how this ends, then you know how sorely disappointed I was. Till next time, thanks for watching. So to start, in the book there is no ambiguity. Hailan and Rui plan the second prince's death 100%, and afterwards, not only do they not feel bad, they kind of gloat about it. When Hailan goes to visit Rui so they can burn the paper cutouts together, she says, Do you hear the cries ringing all over the palace? Isn't it beautiful? I don't think I've ever heard a more beautiful sound. To which Rui responds, You handled everything so neatly. Of course the cries sound beautiful. The rigidly moral Girl Scout Rui you know and love from the drama is nowhere to be found. She is 100% ice. I can see why the morality police didn't want this kind of character as the protagonist in what was to be such a popular show. But wow, would it have been interesting to see. Both Rui and Hailan are pretty much villains. Hailan tricked Chun into killing the second prince, giving her a pillow stuffed with reeds, claiming it would only make him a bit sicker and mess with the empress. Chun had her own beef with the empress at the time, so she decided to do it and snuck the pillow in, only to be shocked to find that the second prince actually died. Hailan is now using this as leverage over her, so Chun can't say a word to anyone. A few other differences. While the Yan Wan and Yun Cho storyline is pretty much the same, small detail, Yan Wan is 14 when she's introduced and Yun Cha is 20. So, that's interesting. Yin Wan also supposedly looks a lot like Rui, which is one of the reasons why Yun Cha takes to Rui so quickly, and it's hinted why the Emperor takes notice of her. Finally, and this I think was a mistake to change, at this point in the novel we have no idea what the Emperor is doing. I said in a previous video that I thought the Emperor's actions were so awkward, half giving Rui hope and half not. Now that I've read this part in the novel, I can see why. There's literally no hint, no clue, not an inkling of hope for Rui to latch onto. The Emperor sends her away as if he really believes she did it and acts like he really has fallen for A Ro. Maybe they were afraid that viewers would just turn off their TVs at this point because it'd just be so depressing, but I really think they should have kept it this way. Like Rui, you go through the feelings of betrayal and confusion and you really get to feel how cold the Emperor can be. Unlike in the drama, where he just seems kind of lame to be honest. He's doing these petty things like sending her flowers, but he's too weak or at least unwilling to give her what she actually needs. They should have just made it seem like he truly had given up on her. In my opinion, it makes the final reveal so much better. Till next time, thanks for watching.